Okay, here we're going to look at preparing and selecting clones. Now, the image here was not chosen by accident. All these are female silhouettes because when we're selecting clones, we want to be selecting an outstanding female plant for its high cannabinoid production. So who to clone? Well, starting out uh, with easy plants such as tomatoes for prosinthias uh, to practice on might be a good initial plant to start with. The goal is to clone a unique individual with desirable traits to ensure the entire planting of superior individuals is obtained. So the reason why I say start with the tomatoes or for Cynthia's, they're really easy and they can help you refine your techniques before you go on to cannabis or other crops. The reason why you want to select that unique individual is you want to capture like lightning in a bottle uh, so you can replicate that one particular unique individual so you can develop a whole crop of those. Can you clone auto, auto flowering plants? Well, yes, but just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. You want to avoid autoflowering plants. Uh, Rudalis, in particular, is the uh, cultivar subset, uh, since these will produce poor quality plants due to the natural life cycle not being easily extended into the cloning process. So typically we're looking at non-autoflowering plants being advantageous to clone and trying to avoid the autoflowering ones, but it is possible. Ideal time for cloning. Uh, in actuality, any plant can be cloned at any stage of growth or development, but there are more ideal times to maximize production and efficiency. The ideal time is when the mother or stock plant is about at least one month old. We don't want to go much younger than that. The goal is to ensure that the traits you want are expressed and provide uh, plant time to produce many branches to allow for easy cloning. If you clone them too early, you won't simply get enough offspring off that initial uh, stock or mother plant. Preparing mother plants for cloning, a stock plant that has been fed less nitrogen will help the cuttings produce roots faster. Overfeeding may produce nice lush growth, uh, vegetative growth in particular, but will increase the time it takes for that cutting to actually root. Ideally, the mother plant should be in the vegetative stage to reduce rooting time and provide clones that will not potentially flower early. So if you have a mother plant already flowering, uh, this will cause a delay in production since the cuttings must go kind of backwards into vegetative state before they can then reflower. So again, a mother plant, at least a one month old in a vegetative state, is the ideal candidate. Fertilizing our mother plant or stock plant, I uh, want to avoid those high nitrogens, even though they do produce this deep green, robust look to plants because cannabis can what's called a luxury consume, which means they can take in more than the plant needs, and that nitrogen will result in a delay in the production of roots, and also the root quality might be poor. There's a fine line between too much and too little nitrogen, so when in doubt, I suggest you to underfeed, because you can always add a little bit more. It's very difficult to take away. Selection tip, when selecting that unique individual with derivable states for replication, you want to pick out that um, one special plant. Uh, cloning just an average plant will result in average offspring. You want to multiply a plant that is unique and can be difficult to find. When looking at an actual plant, select a stem that is still useful but nearing maturation to help reduce rooting time. Now I say select that unique individual. It's very easy in this case to select a unique individual. But here we have this field of sunflowers which might be a little more difficult. So it could be a slightly taller plant be one producing uh, more petals, could be one that flowers earlier instead of later. So there's different nuances you want to take into consideration. And with a larger population, you're more likely to find one unique individual. They're not always as clear cut as this. But the reason why you want to select that one individual is you're going to be growing a lot of these plants. And if it's just average, well, that maybe you can get from other means. Plant material that is not ideal for clones, well, older plant material will be slow to root and may have poor overall root production and should not be the first go-to material. If it's all that you have, by all means, use it. Very young material may also not be able to support itself through the stressful cloning process. So you kind of want that nice in-between, not the too young, not the too old, uh, to allow for increased odds of success in your clones taking root. Uh, storing clones, in general, I don't recommend it. However, if you're transporting plant material, uh, taking fresh cuttings should be placed in a plastic bag that's been like misted with, with uh, water. You place about 40 degrees if you're trying to hold them. Rooting gel can be applied when you first take them, uh, but that can get very messy in a bag. So if you take the cuttings, apply the rooting hormone, and put them in some sort of plug and store the plugs, that could be a way uh, to try to reduce the stress on that newly taken cutting. Uh, that rooting gel initially placed in this situation just causes a mess if they're not directly placed in the media there. So again, we want to try to cut them and get them into the environment as quickly as possible. Some instances that may not always be the case. You can hold them for a little bit, but you want to really reduce that duration.
uh, clone harvest to, to flower harvest. It takes about three months from a cutting clone uh, to harvesting flowers. Again, that can vary a little bit. This means you want to aim for always having about one third of plants in a vegetative state, two thirds in a flowering state. This will allow you that continual harvest and kind of allowing plants to always come in the flower, always have plants in vegetative ready to replace those, always ready to take some clones, have a stock of other plants. So it takes a lot of coordination, but when it does, you can have a nice uh, continual harvest.